Hey, today I want to share with you guys a project that I've been meaning to get to for a long time, and it has to do with uh, how we switch over to inverter power when we're uh, running off of our batteries in the RV. So when I prepare to use the inverter, the first thing I do is to uh, connect the shore power line, uh, the shore power cord uh, directly into the output of my inverter, which I have wired over to where the uh, shore power cable is. And then the next uh, piece really is the crucial piece. I have to then remember to go and uh, disable or shut off the uh, converter charger unit in my RV, which is uh, in charge of charging my batteries, which I don't want to use that uh, while I'm running off of my inverter. So I have to make sure that I go find the power panel and uh, shut off that breaker first. And only when that's done, I can actually turn on my inverter and power everything and it's just really great. So my project is to actually simplify this and I want to make this process automatic. Uh, so when I uh, turn on the inverter, that it automatically is going to switch off the uh, converter charger and I don't have to worry about turning off and on that breaker. Pretty excited, let's do this. I'm going to show you how this is all going to work coming right up. Before we get into this, it's probably important to understand what a converter charger does. In our RV, we have a dedicated converter charger unit, and it's the same with uh, most travel trailers and uh, smaller RVs. So we'll start there. So the role of the converter charger is to convert 120 volt AC power into DC 12 volt power. And why do we want to do that? When we're plugged into shore power, there are still some components in our RV that need to run off of 12 volt, like our lights, our fans, uh, things like that. There's a few other things, and um, we're not getting that from our shore power connection. And uh, also, when we're on shore power, we want to use that shore power to recharge our batteries, so that when we disconnect, we have um, you know charged up battery bank. So in my RV, I'm running the inverter directly off of the battery bank. So my battery bank is providing 12 volt DC power, and that's connected directly to the input of my inverter. Now the inverter is gonna take that and convert it to 120 volt AC power, and I have a 2000 watt inverter. And it's gonna take that output, which is gonna be AC power now, and it's gonna use that to uh, power the RV through the main um, shore power cable in my RV, which is then connected to the converter charger. So I need to turn off the converter charger because it's going to think while I'm on inverter power that, hey, I'm connected to shore power and uh, I need to charge the batteries and I need to create 12 volt DC power to power all of those things. So. I need to trick it uh, and basically turn it off so that it doesn't do those things because I'm actually running off of my batteries that the converter charger is going to want to charge and that is a situation that I don't want to be in. I'm sure things would start heating up if that were the case. So that's why I want to automatically uh, shut off the converter charger when I turn on my inverter. So what I want to do to accomplish this automatic switching off of the uh, converter charger is to install this uh, relay. So this is called a contactor and it's basically a uh, electromagnetic switch that is going to switch something on and off based on uh, whether voltage is present or not on one of these uh, contacts. So I'm going to wire this directly in line with my um, incoming power to the converter charger so uh, that if this switching happens automatically uh, when I turn on my, uh, my, my inverter. So let's head into the uh, shop and I'm going to show you how this is all going to work. Okay, this is all wired up and set up, ready to show you how this is all going to work. Uh, before I do that though, I want to give a quick shout out to Chris DIYer 
he sent me this nice little Chris DIYer sticker. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel, Chris DIYer. Go check him out. That dude has a lot of solar on his house that he installed himself. So thanks a lot, Chris. I will display this proudly here somewhere. So imagine this is my converter charger and uh, this is my inverter. So I don't want them both running at the same time. Now I have this light wired up here just to show that it's going to be on when the uh, converter charger is running. So I'm going to wire this light so it's actually closer to where the inverter on off switch is. So if that converter light is illuminated when I turn on the inverter, I know that there's a problem because they shouldn't both be on at the same time. So using this uh, contactor, this uh, when I apply power to the inverter, it's going to send power to the uh, this A1, A2 uh, connection here, which is going to activate this electromagnetic switch in here. Now when that activates, it's either going to do one of two things. In my case, I have it connected to this NC terminal which is the normally closed terminal. So under normal circumstances, I want that connection to be closed and, and that power to be enabled from the uh, converter charger. I want that connection to be connected. So when that switch goes, when I turn this on, the switch is going to switch it to open at that point, which is going to disconnect, and that's what I want. I'm not going to use the normally open uh, connection there or any of these other connections in this contactor uh, because I just don't need them. I'm only going to use it to uh, switch this small um, no more than 15 amp uh, circuit on and off. So the, uh, the circuit breaker that's currently on my converter charger is a 15 amp circuit breaker so I really don't need anything more than that. Now this part of the contactor is rated at 30 amps. So the important part about selecting the right contactor is to uh, choose one that's got the right rating. So this one's switchable for 120 volts AC and the top part here is rated at up to 30 amps and I think the other thicker, you know, heavier duty contacts down here below that are used to maybe control other motors and other equipment I think is rated up to like 45 amps uh, for uh, this contactor. Now this has got fairly standard uh, piece of electronic equipment and I just got it on Amazon. I'll put links uh, you guys if you, if you want to check it out. So let's uh, see this in action. So once I apply power here it's going to power the A1 and A2. It's going to send power there and you can see that there's this magnetic clunk and it shut that switch off therefore disconnecting power to the converter. So now when I turn the inverter back off, it switches back to the other position which then connects these two back together and uh, and that's kind of my normal operating situation. So I should never have to turn on and off the uh, converter charger manually now. Now I plan to just mount this contactor in a box near the converter charger and on the inverter I plan to just run some uh, I, pl I got an inexpensive uh, power cord here from Walmart and I'm just going to connect this to the second uh, plug on my inverter which will only be powered when I have the inverter on and I'm going to run that all the way to the contactor and to the appropriate uh, places to activate this switch. That's it. Disclaimer time. Okay, just because you guys see me working on projects like this on my RV does not mean that you should go run out and do this on your own, especially if you don't know what you're doing. I am not a certified RV electrician or an electrician for that matter. I am just an RV owner sharing projects that I'm doing on my RV to possibly give you ideas of some things that you might want to do on your own RV. But always consult a professional for advice and review your project plans with them and maybe even have the professional do the work for you. But uh, always be safe, follow proper safety precautions, when, especially when working with electricity. And most importantly, know your own limits and your capabilities. Do not get in over your head on projects that uh, possibly could uh, endanger yourself, your RV, and cause a lot of damage and cost you a lot of money in the end. So, but you guys know all this.
Okay, so probably the least interesting and least enjoyable part of this project is to take this uh, power cord here and run it from my inverter here in this storage bin over to here, under the bed in the bedroom, which just happens to be where all of our AC and electrical service uh, panels are. So this is the uh, back of the panel here where the uh, AC circuit breaker is for the converter charger. And uh, this is where I'm gonna mount the box right there. So I'll be able to tie into those uh, wires right from here. So I've got the uh, cable run back here. And uh, one thing I found is that I didn't have a long enough uh, cord. So I ended up having to go back to the store and getting a longer extension cord. And these are like 16 gauge, uh, just indoor outdoor extension cords. So there really is gonna be hardly any current flowing through these. So it's probably a lot more than I actually need, but it was really inexpensive. And that's probably the easiest way to get a nice little shielded uh, cable to uh, do this uh, hookup. So here's the box. I'm gonna go ahead and wire this in here. And uh, the circuit breaker is right here. Uh, I'm just gonna use uh, some heavy duty Velcro right here to uh, attach this box to the, uh, to the wall here, the back of the um, circuit breaker uh, panel. So behind this uh, panel here, this is where the main circuit breakers are. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. This is the actual breaker where the uh, converter charger is uh, powered from. If I follow this uh, wire here all the way down, I can see that it goes down into where the charger unit is down here. So I'm simply going to disconnect this and tie this into the relay and then take the other end and uh, connect it back into the circuit breaker. But yeah, normally I would shut that off when I'm running on my uh, inverter and then if I need it, I turn it back on again. So. I can simply just, uh, it's just like a regular AC breaker. I can remove it here and then I can just take a screwdriver and uh, disconnect this and uh, wire it back up. So that's the plan. So now I have all of the wires stripped and I'm simply just going to hook it up the same way I did in my little uh, test setup there. Okay, let's double check everything here and I think we are done with this side. Okay, the final step here is to just install this little light that I actually pulled out of an old space heater and it works pretty well. Pretty simple little light. Just gonna clip onto the back of this red thing. So I think I'm gonna put it right about there. Is that gonna do it? Yes. Little tag. All right, I'm just gonna wire this into the back. This is the cord. Came from the back. All I need is the uh, hot wire and the neutral to power this, and the hot's going to go into the red one here. And I'll tidy all this stuff up later. Neutral into the white. And I'm going to see if I can clip this into the back. All right, well, I think it's time for a test. Okay, I'm getting ready to do this test and I wanted to mention something before I did is that I'm never really going to be hooked up to shore power ever when I when I do this because my power cord is actually hooked up directly to my inverter. And uh, in order to get my converter light to actually come on, I'm going to have to uh, fire up my generator, which is going to then hit my transfer switch and it should provide my uh, RV with AC power and then power on my converter. So that's what I'm going to do when I fire up the generator when it kicks on. We should see the uh, the red light on the converter come on and then when I, sh when I turn on the inverter we should see it go off meaning that the uh, automatic switch kicked in and the uh, converter uh, is automatically shut off and then when I power my inverter back off, 
we should then see the uh, light come back on, meaning the converter is re-engaged. So that's the test I'm gonna do. We're probably gonna hear some generator noise, but uh, pretty excited, let's do this. Generator's running, and it should turn on just here in a second. There it is. Okay, converter is on. That's great. Can you guys see that? See the red, little, little red lights on? Okay, now I'm gonna fire up my um, inverter and then we should see the converter automatically shut off. Turn that on. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Light went off. Now I can use my inverter. Now when this uh, shuts back off, we should see the a little light come back on. Converter. Yeah. Sweet. Let's do that again. All right. Switch this to inverter. And then back to converter. That's awesome. Now I should also point out that in some larger RVs, they may not have a dedicated converter charger like I do in my RV, my Class C. Uh, some of those larger RVs have this combined unit. Uh, it's got an inverter in it, and it's got a converter and the charger, and maybe an automatic transfer switch, and they all kind of automatically uh, work together. Uh, in my RV, all of those things are separate units. So in some of those larger RVs, they, uh, you know, it's, a lot of that stuff is combined into one unit, and they typically call that their inverter. So uh, just kind of point that out that, uh, you know, your RV might be a little bit different. I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm really excited at how this project turned out. It really turned out exactly like I had hoped it would. But you have to know that it's really not by accident because you know projects like this really take a long time to prepare for and think about and research and uh, you know as you saw even test out the ideas you know before you actually you know go ahead and install things like this and that really helps in uh, making sure that it's going to be successful but yeah this project's really going to improve and simplify the way that we use our inverter and especially when we're turning it on and off and really kind of make it idiot proof so i don't have to worry about you know if the converter's on or not uh, so i hope you guys got something out of the video if anything you know, maybe you uh, know a little bit more now about uh, the role your converter charger plays in your RV and uh, how it charges your batteries and how you gotta really take a, keep an eye on that, especially when you're using an inverter the way that uh, we do. But if you guys uh, enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful at all. And I would really love to hear about some ideas that you guys are having, you know, with projects that you're planning for your own RV. And uh, if I could offer you a suggestion is just take your time and uh, let those ideas form and think about them for a longer period of time because in my experience, the longer you take to really process and think about these project ideas, the better they get. Take care guys and uh, I will see you guys in the next video and we're gonna work on another project. <laughs> Just cleaning up the shop, putting stuff away, another important part of every project is to clean up after yourself. So in my RV, I'm running my inverter directly off, directly. Okay, here's a crude model to represent uh, the setup that I'm gonna. Why are you still there? 